Hi team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about NIST cybersecurity framework. Sorry for my voice, there's a throat infection, but my ethics, my dedications, my motivation doesn't allow me to stop this recording. So I thought, let me do this recording with this voice itself. In this video, we're going to discuss about uh, how the cybersecurity framework NIST implement in the organization. And in this video, we're going to discuss about the introduction of NIST. And in my next video, I'm going to discuss about the first part of the NIST cybersecurity framework, which is called identify as a function. If you're new to the channel, do subscribe to the YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. My name is Prabhnayar. For more information, you can check my LinkedIn profile. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. So when we're talking about CSF, CSF basically stand for cybersecurity framework. So it is developed by NIST. Initially what happened, the cybersecurity framework was uh, created in support of the critical infrastructure. Okay. And it is applicable to any organization that wish to better manage and reduce the cybersecurity risk. But later on what happened, this framework becomes so powerful, so effective, a lot of companies have start implementing this particular framework and standard framework in the organization. What is the difference between the framework and standard I have covered in my next video of this NIC series, you can check that. So when we're talking about NIST framework, <clears throat> cybersecurity framework, it is basically divided into five sections. The first section is basically called identify. The second section is called as a protect. The third section is basically called detect. The fourth section is called as a respond and fifth section is called as a recover. So this, this overall framework is organized into five key functions. And what I'm planning is in each video, I'm going to discuss each function and their associate category. Like if we talk about my next video in this, I'm going to discuss about identify and their subcategory, which is called asset management and how to implement asset management as a control in the organization. And I'm covering both audit perspective and the implementation perspective. So if you talk about any cybersecurity or information security process in the organization, by end of the day, it, it works on the concept of visibility, which is called identify. So once you have a visibility, then you try to protect. And once you try to protect, if you find any gap, we can able to detect. And according to that, we can respond to the incident and we try to recover from the incident. And NIST basically follow the same process only. Is it clear? So NIST is basically follow the same process only. So we have a different audience in the organization who perceive cybersecurity framework in a different way, like executives, they want to understand the responsibility role. So NIST framework cover that. IT management want to know about the business impact. NIST cover that. IT process management or legal expert want to know what is the threats from a legal aspect. NIST CSF cover that. Implementer want to know how to implement this NIST cover in a step by step manner and operator want to see the effectiveness NIST framework cover everything in that. So when we're talking about NIST perspective, it basically cover the enterprise. It talk about the organization. It talk about the governance. It talk about the management. Is it clear? So we're going to discuss in detail each and everything in, 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 in further videos. Okay. So let's move to the next part. Before, before we build the NIST framework in the organization, I want to collect some basic information because I want to start implementing NIST CSF in the organization. It is not something, okay, I adopt the framework and I start implementing. So let me show you how the framework look like. So team, this is how the framework look like. Now here you can see they talk about asset management. Okay, which is under the function of identify and then they have a subcategory how to implement asset management in the organization. And for that, we have a related reference of standard and framework. What is the difference in standard and framework I have covered in my next video. So we will basically follow the step by step process by which we implementing a cybersecurity framework in the organization. But it doesn't mean, okay, just follow this framework blank and we will implement. No, before implementing this framework, we need to collect some informations. Okay. It's very important. Like the first thing is called as an organization blueprint in which we're going to discuss about the complete name of the organization, organization type, organization chart, you know, they have, who is the CISO, what is the organization objectives, list of type of critical data, okay, list of critical business process. Okay, so that's something we need to know. It is very important to know their vision and mission because based on that only we're going to adopt the framework and creating a cybersecurity strategy. 
Then the third thing is that we really want to know their business plan. What is the overall business plan? What kind of a revenue they are expecting? What is the expectation they have from a cybersecurity point of view? How the cybersecurity is basically creating a value in their processes. And for this, you need to schedule the meeting with the CEO or a board of director or senior management. It is very important. And we also really need to understand, do they have a current information security governance? Now, when we say current information security governance, like do they have a current information security policies? Do they have a current cybersecurity strategy? Do they have a current roles and responsibilities? So all those things we really need to know. Okay. So question is how to implement cybersecurity frameworks in the organization. So the first step, we basically have a prioritize and scope. So we request the organization to scope and prioritize the activity. It is not necessary the entire framework we're going to implement only in one organization. There is a possibility that company does not have some of the process. For, so when we don't have that process, there's no, there's no need to implement a particular control and their category. So the first thing we need to understand the prioritization and scoping. So we request the organization to scope and prioritize the business mission objectives high level organization priority and this information allow the organization to make a strategic decisions regarding the scope of systems and assets that support the selected business line or process within the organization. So question is what kind of an activity we basically perform in the step one. We identify the key executives, speak to them about the mission drivers, understand the risk appetite of an organization because that is very important. We also need to define the scope determine the scope that need to be addressed to the application of CSF. Uh, we need to know the enterprise wide departments processes. What is a risk culture? We also need to know the roles and responsibility of the different people. Okay, we need to determine the systems which is required to attain the mission goals. So all these things is basically done with a step one. So moral of the story is that from a step one, we get some information like enterprise architecture vision, organization mission and drivers, organization directions regarding the funding for other resources and most important understanding of the enterprise present and future attitude toward the risk and IT risk position. So that's something we get from a step one. The second step is basically called as a orient. Now orientation is basically where the uh, where the organization, uh, you know, provide the organization as an opportunity to identify threats. Okay, and vulnerabilities of the system which is identified in a prioritize and scoping step. And we also going to identify the requirement to define the current state. Moral story is that in the orientation stage, we identify what is the legal regulatory requirement we have, what is the overall risk approach the company will take, what is the current threats and vulnerabilities we have. So all these things we will get to know. That is basically done in the orientation stage. So in the orientation stage, you can say we get the information about threats, risk assessment, current profiles, service agreements, availability and everything. Then third step is basically called as a create a current profile. Create a current profile means where are we now? Okay, because when we implementing anything, we need to know what is the current state and what is a desired state. So in the current profile, we will work on where we are right now, what where we stand right now. What are the current threats, vulnerabilities we have? What is the current cybersecurity maturity we have? It is basically very important for us to know the current state. And we also need to document what is a desired state. Then next is basically we conduct the risk assessment. So conducting a risk assessment basically require uh, require the organization to perform risk assessment from a cybersecurity perspective. So in this particular stage, the assets that need to be classified based on the criticality and impact of the business will document. We document the vulnerabilities, we document the risk register. So all those things will be done in the risk assessment phase. So what we get from here is like catalog of potential risk events, target capability level, target profile, okay, business impact assessment results, and we can basically have a reference architecture. Then we basically create the target profile. What is the target profile we need in a cybersecurity framework or in the organization? So in the target profile, we basically going to document the uh, respective controls, respective processes, respective category, what we need in the system. And then we'll try to prioritize what we need to implement first, which is basically done in the step six. Okay, so organization will basically conduct the gap analysis to determine the opportunities for improvement the current state and the gaps are identified by overlaying the current state profile with the target state profile. So actually what, what we get from here is we get the profile gap assessment where we are, where we need to achieve. We prioritize the action plan. We also document the risk acceptance functions and we also look for the performance and conformance target. 
so all those things will be done in the step six and then step seven is all about how do we get there so step six is basically very important because after the gaps are identified and prioritized the required action are taken to close the gap and work toward obtaining the target state so action plan executing may be gradually implemented building on the momentum of project success and we also build the further credibility and improving the success so execution of action plan also provide the opportunity to foster an effective risk management culture throughout the organization so that's something we can do that so these are basically the activities we have that we perform by which we implement the nist csf in the organization so in my next video we're going to discuss about the first function which is called identify and also we're going to discuss about how to implement asset management in the organization for more information, please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss the future videos on a similar topic. Good day. Bye.